I'm going to go ahead and mute myself so I don't make any noise for a while. So quiet now. Everybody has their cell phone off. Yeah. <laughs> Completely off. <clears throat> Very distracting sometimes. Good morning, all. Welcome to the Business Booster Series. I'm Barbara Thomason with the Greater San Marcos Partnership, and I'm so pleased to welcome you here this morning. I'm going to tell you about what this event is all about. Some months ago, we hosted a Business Booster Series, a webinar series that was specifically focused on businesses recovering from damage due to COVID. But we're pleased to bring you this series because it's time to get back to business. 
And I'm pleased to tell you that we're collaborating as a group of chambers throughout Hayes County. And I wanted to get, I wanted to make sure that you got to know the people and the faces behind these great chambers because this is where the core of commerce takes place. And I'm going to introduce each of them to you right now, starting with <clears throat> our primary host for today, which is the Kyle Area Chamber of Commerce and Ms. Julie Snyder, President and CEO. Julie, would you like to unmute and tell us a few things? Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad to have you here with us today. This partnership means the world to uh, myself and our colleagues, but more importantly, our members. Uh, it's because of you that we exist, and we appreciate all of your feedback in our surveys so we can learn about more about what you want, and we're very happy to bring this program to you today. So thank you for attending. Thank you, Julie. I'm also pleased to introduce to you Mr. J.R. Gonzalez, who is here from the Buda Area Chamber of Commerce, and he'll be bringing us next month's program. J.R., would you like to say howdy to the folks? Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure being here, and I want to echo what Julie said, that uh, this series is important, and what Barbara said, it's time to get back to business. Hopefully, this series of seminars or webinars will be useful to you as business owners and entrepreneurs to help reignite and re-motivate your, uh, your business and your customers. So looking forward to it. And uh, once again, to everybody on the call, thank you very much for attending. Great, thank you, JR. Also with us today, Ms. Susan Kemble, who is president of the Dripping Springs Chamber of Commerce, who will bring us a program this summer. Susan, would you please share with us what's happening in Dripping Springs? Well, hello, everyone. Uh, I am happy to be here today. Dripping Springs, you know, again, what JR and Julie said, we are ready, um, ready to be back at it, back in business and um, seeing people even in person. So while this is great, we can be together from, you know, all different parts of Hayes County and then even further, some of us, um, we're, I think people are ready to get back. So we're excited about that. Um, I'm excited. I've had the pleasure of hearing David speak a couple times. Um, so I'm looking forward to today and hoping that you all find uh, great value in what we're offering. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. I don't believe we have on the call today our other two partners, Jason Mock, who is the president of the Greater San Marcos Chamber of Commerce and Michael Ann Hurst, who is president of the Wimberley Valley Area Chamber of Commerce, but they are partners with us in this endeavor and will be hosting programs in the near future. So uh, thank you to all of our hosting organizations. Uh, I have, uh, I also wanted to share with you the Greater San Marcos Partnership. Uh, my organization, we are the economic development organization for Hayes and Caldwell counties, as well as the city of San Marcos. And we're happy to serve you in the growth and the economic health of the region. And anything we can do for you, we're happy to help. I'm going to move forward with some instructions for the day before I turn the program over to Julie. Wrong way. There we go. Here's our calendar coming up on May 11th. And we'll tell you a little bit more about this later in the program. The Buda Area Chamber is gonna be hosting a program called 10 Overlooked Marketing Secrets. So marketing and sales are probably two of the most demanded subjects for webinars and training. So uh, I do think it's important that you put that time on your calendar. You can go ahead and pre-register if you like by going to the link that's shown down at the bottom of the screen, uh, greatersanmarcustx.com forward slash events. And you can get registered right away today if you like. Also, 
We want you to be able to get your questions asked and David is, is happy to answer those questions throughout the program. Barbara, I'm gonna quickly interrupt you. For some reason, your slides are not changing. So if we're just to let you know. You don't see that change? No, you're still on your main screen, the Business Booster Series. Okay, well then I must have stopped sharing. Hmm. I see it. That's very strange. Hmm. Well, that's all right. We can hear you and see you. Okay. Well, my instruction about the question and answer is that David is very happy to answer uh, your questions throughout the program. You just need to enter your questions in the Q&A box, or if you're more comfortable using the chat, please feel free to answer there or ask your questions there and we'll be happy to look there for, um, for your question. And of course, if you don't get your question answered, uh, we can certainly get you to David. His contact information will be provided. Let's see, we have a question already. San Marcos Chamber is on the call. The link I clicked on was as a guest. All right. So we don't have a picture of Jason, right? But Jason is on the call. So thank you, Jason Mock. We just can't see your handsome face. <laughs> All right. At this time, I'm pleased to turn the program over to Julie Snyder, who is our host for today, who's going to introduce our esteemed speaker. So Julie, I'm going to turn the sharing over to you so that you can take the program from here on out. Excellent, thank you, Barbara. Appreciate it very much. Uh, I am so excited about today's program. So let's see, we've been practicing for a year for these uh, sharing the screen and sometimes as we just noticed it works and sometimes it doesn't, but that's all right. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to ask if uh, some of the panelists can say yes, if you see my screen. Yes, all right, so I'm gonna to try to uh, change and flip that, that screen just to make sure you do see that. Yes? All right. So to get started, first of all, thank you, Greater San Marcos Partnership, uh, collaborating with Chambers of Commerce. Barbara, I know you're a veteran in the business, so you know how important how valuable this programming is and to partner with our regional economic development team. Uh, more importantly, we have some amazing supporting members. And so I really want to recognize our sponsors for today. HEB Plus, our Texas grocery store. They're so supportive of the Kyle Chamber of Commerce. And if you've ever experienced great customer service, which is what this program is about, you've experienced it at HEB. So they're very, very happy to sponsor this program, along with the Kyle Economic Development Team. Uh, our city of Kyle is very, very supportive of our chamber as well. And I'm thrilled to have the Kyle Economic Development Team as a sponsor today. They were hoping to be here and uh, talk to you a little bit about Economic Development Week, which is in May. They're also partnering with the Kyle Chamber of Commerce that week, and we'll be doing a webinar. You'll all receive a, a invitation. It's called Ready, Set, Thrive. And it's all about what Barbara talked about, getting back to business and helping our members thrive. So with that said, I can't think of a better speaker that we could have partnered with today about uh, learning about building customers for life. And as a chamber, we want to build our membership for life. Uh, I have known David for several years 
Uh, he's been in the Chamber of Commerce world for what, 38 years, David? Um, but more importantly, he has spent the last 36 years training and, educa and educating the private sector, the association world, and the chamber world. And one of his most popular programs is Building Customers for Life. So David, you'll need to, I believe, unmute. I think you're already unmuted. And okay. ready to rock and roll. I've got your slides ready. And it's all yours. I appreciate it, Julie. And Barbara and Julie, thank you for including me in this uh, business booster program. And uh, Barbara and Jared said it right. It's just uh, bringing back business is uh, is critical. What a wonderful opportunity we have to uh, to refresh and reset our customer service skills on and everybody on your payroll, because as we've been in a business. Uh, I mean this politely, a business coma for the last year. Now it's time to get out, to get into that front door, make that phone call. And the brick and mortar business, the small businesses, which is the backbone of America, uh, is going to get busier by the hour once uh, people start getting back into it. So there's a theme that I wanted to share in this program, and that's that uh, serving others is a privilege, not an obligation. So I want to kind of weave that thought through the program this morning, that serving others is a privilege, not an obligation. In other words, when the phone rings, you know, you never want to hear, oh, no, another phone call, or I'm busy with this customer, another one walked in. Uh, we want to flip that over. So I want, to, I want to keep our foot on the gas pedal as we increase our customer service to those that choose to do this. And, the, and the, uh, uh, one of the main points of this program is to build customers for life. So I have to ask the question right off the bat, what would be the value to your company, business, or association if everybody on your payroll created one customer for life as a result of how he or she treated those that come to you, whether the phone call and internet communication or actually walk into your store. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the value of customer service because it's been there all along, but we don't think about customer service until it fails us. It's almost like driving your car. You don't think about getting a flat tire until you get a flat tire. And so customer service is the same way. We don't think about it until there's a flaw or somebody brings it to our attention or we, we find out that we are disappointed by something. And as consumers, uh, our antennas are up just as much as those that come to us. Uh, in fact, in 1998, the IRS uh, was restructuring their mission statement. And the IRS actually included in their mission statement uh, a new section called Focus on Customer Service. One doesn't usually think of the IRS as offering uh, customer service, but even for a business like that is critical. You know, when I stop and think about uh, in, in our minds, uh, in fact, those that are listening, and, and thank you for, for joining us this morning, uh, we have uh, memories of impressions that have been made to us as consumers. So if I say, uh, if I ask you, what, what are you going to recognize? If I say a business's name and, uh, and you, you're in your mind, you're going to give them a one to 10 rating. So if I think of Walmart, we probably all shopped at Walmart. We're going to have a, a, a level of expectations from our last visit. Uh, and it could be maybe your customer service from a library or a gas station. Uh, let me give you one more. How about your, your last experience with the DMV? My point is we remember, we retain, we recall how we were treated last time. And it's the same for all of us that are listening because every phone call I get, every, everybody that I talk to, and you also make such a difference on, uh, on what it takes. So when I stop and think about the customer service makes news, it's amazing. So I wanna talk about communication because we send and receive communication three different ways. 7% uh, by the words that we speak, and 38% of our communication is our tone of voice. And 55% of our communication is nonverbal. We sometimes don't think about that, that ratio. Uh, something as simple, go back to this, the words we speak. Let's say you call, uh, you call David's shoe store. And uh, you call David's shoe store and, and they answer the phone, uh, hello. And you're not sure you have the right number because it didn't say, good morning, David's shoe store. Uh, it makes such a difference when we stop and think about that. So the tone of voice 
is, is, uh, is not important. It's critical to make that first impression. And that's what we're talking about is first impressions on all of these things. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. The second one is the tone of voice. When we call somebody or we talk to somebody, let's say you call David Schuster again, and somebody picks a phone and say, uh, hello. Well, that aggressive tone of voice sent a message. Uh, one thing I've done for decades is when somebody says, David, how are you? I've always answered that question. I'm just right. Thanks for asking. I'm just right. Thanks for, I invite you to take that phrase. And the next time somebody says, uh, hey, Frank, how's Susan? How about, how are you doing? Answer the question. I'm just right. Thanks for asking. It opens up a friendly zone of conversation. So I hear I'm using the, the words I speak and the tone of voice to create this open opportunity uh, for those to come into our zone and communicate. And last but not least is 55% of our communication is nonverbal. That's a huge number and it's a huge impression. I remember years ago, I was doing a, uh, uh, an in-person customer service seminar uh, in New Jersey. And I had one in the morning, one in the afternoon, I'm taking a walk down this beautiful little town in New Jersey, uh, Main Street, America, it was fabulous. And I saw this sign outside of a coffee store and the sign said, and it was a nonverbal communication, it's a great example. So the sign said, uh, if you walk in and say a uh, cup of coffee, it's $5. And then the other, the other, the second question on the billboard was, if you walk in and say, good morning, I'd like up a, cup, a cup of coffee, it's $3. And if you walk in and say, good morning, I'd like a cup of coffee, please, it's a dollar. And this is all nonverbal. So I walked into the store and I said, good morning, I'd like a cup of coffee, please, in that tone of voice. And they said, well, that'll be a dollar. And I said, how's business? They said, it's fabulous. I've never sold so many $5 cups of coffee in my life because people didn't read the nonverbal communication. It's out there, it's in front of us. A really good example, uh, and I talk about first impressions. Uh, when we stop and think about a grocery store, who makes the first impression in the grocery store? Is it the produce clerk? Is it the dairy stalker? Is it the checker? Whoever he or she, is it the person bag? The answer it could be no. Nine times out of 10, our first impression of a grocery store are the people that are collecting the baskets out in the parking lot because they have an opportunity to make the first impression. So no matter where you are in the, uh, in the organization or company or business that you work for, all of you have what I call emotional equity in the success of the business. And that's how we treat each other. That's what makes it so exciting because we have a chance to make a difference with somebody that may go to two or three different stores because of coupons or, or parking or whatever the issue is. But you know, when they come to our store, it makes it special. So one more little uh, conclusion on communication, excuse me there for a minute, is I wanna talk about the, uh, there's two words on communication and uh, information and communication. Now those two words are often used together, but they have separate meetings. So the two words are often used interchangeably. So information is giving out, but communication is getting through. So we have to ask ourselves when we communicate, are we just giving people information or are we giving them information and communicating it? A lot of times in, uh, uh, in phone messages, you're only getting information, you're not getting communication. Our office is open from nine to five. If we're not there, call back. There's a better way to say that. And so throw a little sugar in the conversation. So even though it's non, it's not not direct, it does make it does make a difference. Okay. <clears throat> Julie, let's talk about the top 10 golden nuggets of customer service. <clears throat> okay, Julie's going to change the slide. And away we go. I want to talk about these one at a time. And uh, Julie has all these slides. So if you choose to write these down, fine. If not, Julie can get you a copy of these. Number one is know your customer, client, guest, patient by their first name. When you respectfully, because it could be uh, Mr. Ocker before somebody calls me David, and I said, no, call me David. When someone gives you the permission to use their first name, unless you already have that permission or that implication that you can, when you hear your own name, your listening skills go up 30%. So if I'm in the grocery store and I hear over the loudspeaker, David, register four, David, register four, I hear my name, David. I know I don't work at register four, but my listening skills just went up 30% when I heard my name. So when you talk on the phone and you repeat the customer's name in the first 10 seconds, 
that locks the customer in. And when you talk to somebody, I always, for the 20 years I was behind the desk at, Ch at Chambers of Commerce, only two of them in 20 years, I would write the person's name and I made sure that I repeated his or her name in the first 10 seconds. So if Barbara called me, I da, 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 and Barbara, thanks again for calling. I would give the person back their name so they know that I am not interrupted. I'm listening to them and I'm paying them attention. So uh, that's, that's a, that's, these are not in order, but they're all critically important. And you'll think of several nuggets that are in order. The second one <clears throat> is listen twice as much as you talk. I have a, we're going to talk about another section about listening because listening is just critical to building business. If we listen to our customers, our guests, our patients, say you go have a physical or you go, uh, go have your car checked up and you think <clears throat> we need to listen to what the customer is saying to us because how can we serve them better how can we keep them out of the arms of our competitor if we don't really listen and understand how we can be benefit? I want to be part of somebody else's solution. Uh, when I was in, in the Palm Springs chamber for 10 years, I'd walk down the street and I said, my main mission is to help and heal whoever has a question for the chamber, whether it's chamber related, city related, economic development related, or regionally related. So listen twice as much. We're going to talk about listening a little bit later. So we're going to come back to that. Julie, let's hit the third one. <clears throat> Always tell the truth. If you ever want to lose a customer or disappoint a customer, you tell them something that's not correct. Uh, when I say always tell the truth, they came to us for a reason. When they came to us, uh, it's because we were their better choice. I'm going to talk about this way at the end if we have a chance. But my point is always tell the truth because and be transparent. If you cannot help somebody, say, you know, I don't know the answer, but I know who does. This happens all the time in nonprofit world. I get questions. Uh, I've been in the Institute program for a long time teaching. I have thousands of friends that I've made over the years, and we still talk. And if I don't have the answer, I'll send somebody to Florida to get the answer, or I'll send somebody to Cincinnati to get the answer. But you know what? Always tell the truth. And especially if you don't know the truth for the customer, it's still your customer. Get the truth them and get back to them and follow them up. Okay, the next one, Julie. <clears throat> Never argue with a customer, uh, communicate with them. When somebody has an argument or a complaint, one of the best examples I ever heard is years ago, I, I was at uh, uh, an Air Force base doing some program for the US Air Force and Colin Powell had a statue in the Buffalo Soldiers Park. It was fat and I'm a real fan of Colin Powell. I've heard him speak before, but on the bottom of his plaque, he said, the day soldiers stop bringing us their problems is the day we stop being their leader. It's the same with customer service. The day our customers stop bringing us their problems is the day we stop being their source of shopping or gifting or services. So be thankful when somebody complains because they're bringing it to you not your competitor. So when I say never argue with the customer, and I'm, I'm aware as you are that all customers are not right all the time, but if they didn't have an issue, they wouldn't come to us. And I am thankful. Uh, this sounds harsh, but I was thankful when people yelled at me at the chamber because they're bringing me their problem. And I understood that they needed service. And that's why they're here. Calm them down, have a conversation, use some nonverbal, use the tone of voice, bring them around. But that's a great one. The next one is under promise, over perform. Boy, every chance we have to spoil somebody, to make an impression, to be part of their solution in the first or second call, they're going to think about that. They're going to understand. So, and it's not that hard to say, gee, what can I do for you today? And then you solve them. Thank you for calling. You know, give them more than they expect every time and they will call you. They will go over the phone book of all the chamber members. They will find you to your front door. That's a good one. Okay, next one, Julie, is follow up, follow up, follow up. I think, now, like I said, these are not in order, but if there's any of these 10 gold nuggets that I think are, is, the, is the, the flagship nugget would be follow up, follow up, because I think the majority of business is lost from a lack of follow up. I'll return the call in five minutes. Some people say I'll return the call in 24 hours. Sometimes I'm naive enough to believe that, that they're going to return my call, even though I left two messages. Uh, and I'm not shy after a few messages, I'll pick up the phone and call them. Uh, David has uh, had this question. Follow up is follow up was a great conversation at your next staff meeting. Ask all your employees, how are we doing a follow up on orders, on inquiries, 
on simple things that can turn into lifetime customers. So follow-up is an absolutely critical, critical important. Okay, Julie, next one is, <clears throat> boy, this is critically, and be thankful for each and every customer who complains because you still have the opportunity to make them happy. Be thankful for each and every customer. Is every customer, patient, guest, client, or, or uh, a consultant, are they happy? The answer is no. I mean, there's a lot of speed bumps in life, and sometimes maybe they had a flat tire on the way to your store. They have a little attitude by the time they get there. But you know what? We need to be thankful every time. And that's what makes this special. When I think about being thankful every time, uh, American Airlines has a really good little uh, checklist. And you might want to write these down because there's not a slide in it. But uh, the next time you go to a retail business or a, or a company, you talk to somebody, and, and I'm sharing this with all the people that are watching this, the next time you go and somebody, and you need service from something, you need to have a question, you're gonna buy a product or you're shopping and they say, can I help you? Uh, this little quick checklist might help you. Ask yourself, uh, did they smile? And they can smile over the phone or they can smile uh, 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 in person. Did they smile? The next question, did they use your name? Uh, the next one is, uh, did they make eye contact with you? That's critical. That's nonverbal. Uh, the next one is, did, did they understand your needs? Did they understand what you were looking for? The next one is, were they friendly? Were they kind? Were they courteous in this phone call or face-to-face? -face? The next one, did they thank you? And then the last one, uh, did they ask you if there's anything else we can do to help you while you're here? So now that you're taking this inventory, this is a great conversation for a staff meeting. When we talk to those that we're choosing to serve, whether uh, nonprofit associations, private sector, corporations, municipal governments, sovereign nations, people expect these things. And with us getting past the pandemic now and getting out in business, this little checklist is gonna help a lot. Okay, the next one, Julie, is enthusiasm in person on and each phone call. Believe me, people can feel, people can, can get the vibe of your enthusiasm. So after Julie introduced me, and I'm thankful for that, Julie, what if I would have come on the screen and said, yeah, thanks for having me. Let, why don't we go ahead and get started? It's going to be, we got, got a lot of stuff to cover. That lack of enthusiasm would have set the seed of disappointment. Gee, I'd rather have a root canal than sit through this. The answer is no. If you include enthusiasm and passion, but make it sincere. People know when, when enthusiasm is sincere. It's just as easy to build that customer for life because you're either going to be like a magnet. Our customers come to us because of a magnet and something we do and we turn one of the magnets that we repel each other. And that's, how, so enthusiasm is critical, critical. The next one, Julie. Be thankful for each and every customer every time, including the customers that have been longtime chamber members, association members. Uh, if you're in a car dealership and you have, you've sold three or four cars to generations of the same family, Always take those that got you to your success. Be thankful for them. I know at the Chamber of Commerce, we had 1,100 members at the time. And we would call longtime members for no other reason, just to thank them for being part of our past, our present, and our future. And if somebody's been a member 15, 20 years, I would thank them for that. And they would always say, well, David, don't you want a donation? I said, no. I just wanted to thank you for being part of our success so we can build on our team together as we build a better community. And that being thankful for your customers is critical. And of course, the last one is the golden rule. I think the golden rule is absolutely critical. It's old, it's tried, it's proved, it works. Okay, Julie, I want to go to the, uh, the 10 principles of listening. <clears throat> okay, but, but let's ask this question. What can you and your team add to the list that worked for you? Because every business is different. Every corporation is different. Every, every product is different. So have, have a staff, and what can we add to the 10 gold nuggets after you get the list from Julie, okay? <clears throat> so the 10 principle, this is absolutely a critical point of communication and customer service. And I know like you have, I drive around town in the Palm Springs, Palm Desert, Coachella Valley area, and I see this sign on windows and I don't like this sign, and it says, your name here. I don't like for lease signs, I don't like your name here signs, in malls, strip centers, things like that. <clears throat> so the 10 principle of, of listening is part of the solution. As more people come into our stores, more people call us, more people are gonna communicate with us. These 10 principles of the listening could be a benefit to you and your team. The first one is stop talking. When somebody else is talking, listen to what they're saying 
and not and don't interrupt and don't talk over them like they do on the view that television show the view these women talk over each other on the conversation you can't follow it and don't finish people's sentences for them we have to stop talking that's the most critical of 10 principles of listening to stop talking okay the next one is uh prepare yourself to listen prepare we never think about this oh i should prepare myself to listen you prepared yourself to listen on this uh, webinar uh, by that, I mean, focus on the speaker and don't get distracted with random thoughts, checking your emails, doing like and some of us are, I get it. Uh, and don't think about what's for lunch and is it going to rain today? My point is focus, prepare yourself to listen. That phone call could be a large account. That phone call could be a big building opportunity for your company or your business. The next one is uh, put the speaker at ease. By putting the speaker at ease, remember that, uh, that their needs and concerns, remember the speaker's needs and concerns, maintain eye contact with them and share your thoughts completely. Don't leave anything out. If you're thinking about something, say it. So put the speaker at ease. Put the speaker at ease, absolutely critical. The more comfortable the speaker is, the better he or she can communicate. The next is remove distractions. Don't be checking your emails. Don't click your pen. Just remove distractions. Uh, it sends the message to the speaker, whether it's it's over the over the telephone or or face, uh, that you're bored or distracted. You don't want to do that because what if you only had? I was up in Canada doing a customer service program, and I said, "What if you only have one phone call a day? How would you treat that phone call?" A gentleman raised his hand. He said, "I work for a heating and air conditioning company in Alaska, in uh, Canada, and I only get sometimes one phone call a day." I said, "How do you treat it?" He said, "Like it's my long lost relative." Every phone call has a future. Is that future with your company? That's a sentence to have another conversation about. Every phone call has a future. Does this phone call have a future with us? The next one is try to understand the other person's point of view. Don't be judgmental. Don't lock yourself in a mindset that uh, this is a problem. Try to understand the other person's point of view. Emphasize. My point is consider the issue from their perspective. Don't be judgmental, consider from their perspective. The next is be patient. Boy, at times I'm the, I'm the prince of patience. And at times my patience just is not as, uh, not as lengthy as it should be, but that's all. So let the speaker continue in their own words and their tone of voice to keep the thoughts flowing. So be patient, let, let who's talking to you uh, get their message across. And number seven, is critical. Avoid personal prejudice. If you have a policy, a standard, a, a, a standard uh, procedure, and you have to stick to it, I get it, but avoid personal prejudice. If somebody doesn't, I don't want to say buy into your communication or buy into your complaint or buy into your even something as simple as re returning a product to a store. And if they come in pretty judgmental and uh, just avoid personal prejudice. So and my point is, we have so much power in our communication and our listening skills. And this avoid personal prejudice is, is absolutely critical. Okay, so uh, number eight is uh, listen to the tone. Listen to the tone of voice. I talked about that earlier. When you pick up the phone, that, that golden 10 minutes, that, excuse me, the golden 10 seconds. When we first communicated with somebody, that 10 seconds makes such a huge positive impression and listen to the tone uh, of the caller. And uh, the next one is, Listen for ideas, not just words. I think this is the most important principle of listening is listen for ideas, not just the words that are spoken, but the ideas or theme or concept that the person is talking about. Listen for ideas, not just the words they speak, and you'll, you'll have a better understanding of how to serve this person uh, as a result of your listening skills. And the last one is, is wait and watch for nonverbal communications. Wait and watch. So after you're done listening, and you're, if you're face-to-face, -face, watch, wait and watch for nonverbal communications. Okay, thank you for that, Julie. <clears throat> okay, so let's continue. So I have to ask everybody that's listening, uh, who in your organization is the first impression? We talked about that. So, and I always say, uh, who's the director of first impression? I actually had one client, they had 75 employees. They, they changed everybody's name badge to say, 
Uh, my name is David Ocker. I'm the director of first impression than the department they worked in. That's how important the director of first impression is. So I always ask who is the director of impression with all with everybody? And uh, so there's two questions. Who is your internal customer and who is your external customer? The internal customer are those that we work with. And at times, those that we work with, we are less polite to those that we work with than those that we work for. Because if I'm on the phone in my office, da 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 da, da and, and Frank calls me, hey, Frank, I'm on the phone here. Well, I work with Frank. Frank's on my team. We're all pushing the ball up the same hill. We're all trying to get to the same goal. So when I stop and think about who is the internal director, those that we work with, we need to pay sometimes more attention to those that we work with. And the other ones is who do we, uh, uh, the other customers are the external customers, everybody that we work for. That's what makes it fun. So, you know, we all make first impressions. Uh, do we have a, uh, do we have a question, Julie? Yes, sir. We've had, uh, oh. we've had a, a woman, thank you very much for the reminders. And what can we do about negative social media postings from disgruntled customers? You know, that is a challenge. You can't change that. It's, it's like the weather that comes over the mountain. You can't change that, but you can, you, can, you can pick up. I look at it as a red flag. We've all had it. I had it at the chamber. When, you're, when you deal with the public, you're going to have that. The flag's up. You can't change that. What you can is make a difference with the next customer and the next customer and the next customer and the next phone call. That's how you do it. You have to build the positive because the people are going to wave this red flag. I didn't get good service. I didn't get a good parking place. My food was cold. The server was cranky. You can't change that. And to get there and debate that, it just digs a deeper hole. So you might say, I, we've been made aware of that we're turning up the volume on, the, on our customer service through the following five points, and then include that with a positive thing. Put it on your menu at a restaurant. You may notice a new fresh look on the booths. You may notice a, a bigger smile on our staff because we're, we welcome you all back. So you can't change what's happened, but you can change your next inquiry. I think that's the, uh, there's, no magic, there's no magic wand for that that negative media, that's just out there. Uh, so, but you, but you can't change it. Do you have a recommendation on how you respond when you call or respond uh, in writing? How do you handle that, uh, that negative post or comment either? You know, and I had that happen at the Palm Springs Chamber when I was a CEO years ago. And I would actually go to the person's business. I'd make an appointment, I'd be on time and I would write down their comment, their negative comment. And I said, how can we work together to fix this? Because obviously I didn't meet, our organization didn't meet your needs. How can we be part of your solution? So I would actually go down and talk face to face. And I, that's much better than a, a text or an email or a phone call. That was my first choice. You always can't do that. But when I could go face to face, I'd make an appointment. I said, wow, now I understand why you're disappointed. How can we work together to be part of the solution? So I would always, I would always use this phrase, <clears throat> what solution do you have that would benefit us both? And then I'd stop talking, zip the lip. What solution do you have that would benefit us both? You'd be stunned at the creative ideas that the complaints had. It's amazing when you let people think about a solution because they think you're, you're the president and CEO, you have all the answers. I'm just the shepherd of the conversation. So when I ask people, and I did this for 20 years behind the desk, what solution do you have that would benefit us both? That's a wonderful question. It's not negative, it's open-minded, but you have to stop talking and let them, because you're not gonna get an answer in three seconds. They're gonna go, whoa, I didn't, I didn't see this coming. And they think about it and they go, wow, well, what if we do this, David? All of a sudden, we're a team again. That's something that worked for me. Very good. And we did have a one of our, uh, and respond, uh, which I think is great advice. And David, you may uh, agree that you should always answer and answer timely, apologize and turn it into a positive, just like you, you said, you know, use that complaint to make it better and improve your processes as a business owner and operator. You know, it's, it's, almost, it's almost a little bit uh, ironic. I'm walking down the street in Palm Springs. I remember all this thing happened. Oh my gosh, I wonder what my next complaint gonna be. 
because that's an opportunity. That's just the nature of business. When we deal with one person or a thousand people, yeah, that's just part of the deal. So, okay, so let's move on to first impressions. So the first impression is usually the receptions or the employee that greets each customer each time. Uh, another first impression is your business card. When you give someone a business card, turn it with, Marriott is perfect with this. They take the business card with two hands and they give it to somebody as if it's a treasure, as if it's a trophy, as if it's an award. People love that. Your business card is an impression. If you dig a business card out of your purse, your wallet that's bent and everything like that, you hand it to them, gee, this one's bent. That's, that's an impression. The next impression is the cleanliness of your front door. You may not think about that, but that's the first impression. People grab a, a, a door handle. Let's say you go to a restaurant and you grab the, the door handle and you open the door of this restaurant and it's sticky. That's the first impression. We don't think about that, but that is the first impression. Even the cleanliness of the front door and your windows is an impression. Make sure the front of your store looks good. Uh, next one is eye contact. The next is your tone of voice. We talked about that as an impression. I always say, does your wardrobe match your passion? Does your wardrobe match your business? Does your wardrobe match your product? Uh, if I walk into a men's store, I expect the, the gentlemen and, and the ladies to be well-dressed. Maybe they're in a nice dress or a necktie. If I go into a shoe store, I expect to be, I expect to talk to somebody that's dressed. Like my point is when people come to us, they have predetermined expectations of what to expect. And boy, that 10 seconds, it's like a billboard. Billboards are designed to go 55 miles an hour within 10 seconds and 55 miles. Can I read the words? Uh, do I want it? Do I need it? Where do I get it? How does it benefit my life? Something as simple as a red and white can on a billboard that says, mm, good, you know it's Campbell's Soup. If you go buy a billboard and you see the Nike Swish, you don't need to read anything. It makes the impression. Our customers are the best opportunity to spoil every time. That's why I think the, the best, we talk about the sacred seven and the sincere smile. Boy, how important is a sincere smile to over the phone, face to face? Let's say you're in a small, small retail store. A lot of people have five or less employees. Somebody's on the phone behind the counter and you pick up the phone and uh, you're talking in a conversation. Somebody walks in your store. You can always cover the, uh, the mouthpiece. Hey, thanks for coming in. Be right with you. Acknowledge that they park their car walked across the parking lot, like in the desert here, sometimes it's 120 degrees, they're gonna walk in, I'm so thankful, and I'm gonna acknowledge them. But to be on the phone and keep talking, somebody comes in, uh, you just feel like they just flip you like a cheese omelet. So, and the last is of course the verbal welcome. I always ask the clients that I work for and the, and the employees on the team, what are you famous for? I ask what they're famous for, and they say, you know, I never thought about that, David, but sometimes people are famous for a greeting, uh, a product, a service, uh, a sports event. But my point is, I used to ask my employees, what are you famous for? And somebody said, well, I'm a really good listener. And I, I like to have uh, work to conclusion, things like that. And then I would also find out whatever they did best, why don't you do it? I, my mentor, fabulous human being, he passed away in 1996, but he taught me something a long time ago that I used in chamber business. He always said, David, whatever you do best in life, do more of it. I love that. Whatever you do best in life, do more of it. And I invited my employees to do that. Every, every week when I, when I had 11 employees, I would give them a little a question on Monday. And I said, I'm not going to give you the answer until Friday. So I had a staff meeting and I, and I, what's the question for today, David, for the week? And I said, okay, I want all of you to be like a postage stamp all week. What does that mean, David? I said, I'll tell you on Friday. So they worked all week, did everything. And of course, in an organization, like other organizations and nonprofits, Barbara's organization and all of your organizations, uh, we're multitasking. So here comes Friday's staff meeting. And they said, okay, David, what did you mean by that postage stamp? I said, well, you know, we're all multitask. What I said is, what I meant was that be like a postage stamp, stick with one thing until you get there. Whether it's uh, planning an event, communicating with your board of directors, writing agendas, things like that. I would have them, they said, oh my gosh, slap their head. Of course, uh, we had this great little gig going on every week. We had so much fun for 11 years, it was wild. But my point is they understood that when we have a task, including a customer or a chamber member or an issue or an event, stick with it until you get there. 
So the poached stamp, and that, that's a great, that's a conversation for a staff meeting right there. The next is, uh, <clears throat> if you want to be, if you want to be world famous, what you do, don't worry about getting paid for it. You know, Gandhi didn't get paid. Mother Teresa didn't get paid. You can be famous for service and not make, don't worry about the money. Now, when I say Chick-fil-A, great customer service. Uh, one of our sponsors, the grocery store, great customer service. That they didn't wake up. We have to earn that. And it's one customer at a time. And that's what makes this so exciting because you all have so much power and everybody on your payroll, I'm going to say it again, everybody on your payroll can be a warrior of service to every phone call, every walk-in, because they have the power. Everybody on payroll has the power to build customers for life as, for what we do. And I would say, don't spend another minute uh, thinking about it. Make the difference. I, I want to talk about, there's four uh, ethical points and in customer service. So I want to say, does your customer service include these four points of ethics? Number one is trustworthy, responsible, respectful, and fair. Let's say that somebody out there probably bought a new car lately. Let's talk about, I do a lot of work with car dealerships and, and, and auto malls and big corporations. And I ask them, I says, so if I go onto your lot, uh, are they, were they were they're trustworthy communication? Did they make a point? Uh, the next, were they responsible? And were they respectful? Uh, I learned a great lesson last time, last time we bought a car. Uh, uh, it, was a, it was a Nissan. And uh, my wife and I went in, and uh, so we walked in. Of course, the Sylvan came out and greeted me, shook my hand, and uh, said hello, gave him his name. And uh, I said, my wife is your customer. She'd like to buy, she'd like to look at a new Murano today. And we had another Murano. We're going to trade in because we like the car. And so the salesman looks me in the eye, and he said, well, what color do you want your wife to have? And right then, he lost the sale. So I said, thank you for asking. I said, who's your newest salesperson? Well, that's Susan over in the corner. Well, I, so I told my wife, let's go see Susan. So we went to Susan. I said, Susan, how's business? She said, well, I've just got here. I haven't sold a car yet. I said, Susan, my name is David. This is my wife, Amy, and she'd like to look at a new Murano today. And Susan looks at me and she says, you know, David, we have a lounge that has the golf channel and some fresh fruit and fresh drinks. If you'd like to go to the lounge and watch the golf channel, I'll show your wife what we have today. Who did we buy the car from? We bought it from Susan. My point is at 10 seconds, that salesman, he has a family to feed. He needs grocery money. I understand that, but he flipped me like a cheese omelet. And we did buy the car, but we bought it from the lady. So when I think about trustworthy, responsible, respectful, and fair, it's not important. It's critical because we don't think about the ethics part on that. Have we got another question by chance, Julie? I can't hear you, Julie. Julie, can you hear me? We can't hear you. There you go. Barbara, can you? There you go. Perfect. Okay. Do we have another question? All right. We do have from a very nervous millennial. Go she ahead. wants to know, do you feel eye contact as we've moved into a more virtual world where people are less comfortable with in-person interaction is still pertinent to develop relationships? Absolutely. That's a great question. That's a great question because it's critical. That's part of our communication is eye contact, human contact. It, we have to get back into that zone because we've been out of the zone. We've been pushed outside the circle for a year with this pandemic. and We're all doing things over the internet. And I understand that. But now is an opportunity to rebuild relationships and eye contact is critical. A good example, I've done a lot of training for six years uh, I did training for the White Mountain Apache tribe on the Sovereign Nation uh, up in uh, Northern Arizona. And the White Mountain Apache Native Americans have a tradition that when an adult asks them a question, no matter what your age is, you drop your eyes to the earth out of respect to the person you're talking to. And that was an issue the same as our caller just had. So the Native Americans would drop their, uh, their eyes to the, to, the, to the earth as respect to the call. And that was a, that was a hard thing to understand. And so once they did the respect, then they went and made eye contact and said, hey, how can we help you today? So it's a great question. And with young people, this may be a, not a new, new thing, but it needs a little extra effort, including our tone of voice, our eye contact. And when we have the opportunity to make that little 10 second impression, who do you think they're gonna call next time if the impression is good and positive. So that was a great question and a good point because we need to pay more attention to that. And as we walk in stores and we're gonna be customers too, 
We need to pay it. We need inventory. Did they make eye contact with me? And if they didn't, why not? Were they on the phone, ignore me, walk by me? It makes a difference. Great question. Do you have one more question, Julie? Yes, uh, we've just about 10 more minutes remaining. Oh my I gosh. To have you uh, address, I'm going to read this exact so that way you can address uh, the comment here. Uh, it says, I disagree with advice for bad social media reviews. You acknowledge the complaint, you offer a solution always. Do not ignore bad reviews in social media. Would you like to respond to that, David? You know, uh, that's not the path I would take, but that's what's fun about serving others. We all have our own path. We have our own passion. We have our own thought process. So actually, I invite that question because that's their solution. There's no standard. Go to the, go to the instruction book. Oh, no, page 37. There's the answer. I have, I have uh, David's, David's inventory of skills, and the caller has his or her inventory of skills. And so uh, that's not the wrong answer, but that may work best for them because that's the uh, arena of communication that they're using. So I thoroughly respect that, but it wouldn't work for me. But my point is that's refreshing because when I had the chance to walk into someone's business and communicate, sometimes we can't do that. And with the social media, that is a whole new uh, opportunity. So I don't disagree with the caller. In fact, I invite that question because it makes a point that we all have a different fingerprint and our fingerprint of service is over. So let's say that uh, I go into a, a shoe store and I do, and I drive away from the shoe store and that person in the shoe store says, I wonder what impression we made. So as the person looks down the street and the, the taillights are going fading down the street, how did we do? See, we made an impression on them and they made an impression on us. They're evaluating us and I'm evaluating them. And it's the same. So this, that was a great question because in her sphere of influence, he or she, they can, they can make that happen. Okay, next one. Okay. Uh, just two more comments, and I think this is the uh, the cherry on top. When chambers of commerce collaborate, uh, our members learn from each other, and you've taught us a lot today and refreshed our minds on great customer service. Uh, but we had two other members and business owners and operators respond to that. Uh, one says. Always answer and answer timely, apologize and turn it into a positive. And then another member has an acronym uh, that they live by. It's called LAST. Listen, apologize, solve, and thank. So with that, I think those are great tips. And David, we have run out of time. And we oh it's just been such a pleasure. And before I let you go, uh, I did want to let all of the attendees know that uh, David was kind enough to send us 20 of his books. It's called Success Simplified. If you're interested in a book, give us a call. We'll make sure that uh, we get you one. Uh, they're $20. I'll hand deliver it if you're close by. So thanks again, David. Thank you to HEB and Kyle Economic Development. Your sponsorship allowed us to have such an amazing speaker. And uh, a rule of David's that he gave us today, I want to thank each and every one of you that spent your time for the last hour tuning in. And thank you for supporting your Kyle Chamber and all of the regional chambers of commerce. We really appreciate and value very much. Barbara? Yes. So <clears throat> let me ask you what slide you can see up now. One million cups. All right, okay, <laughs> we're rocking now. So I wanted to just uh, announce to you all that in the greater San Marcos area, we've launched a 1 million cups chapter and everyone is invited to log in if they'd like to. It's on the last Wednesday of each month. This is a supportive environment for entrepreneurs and startup businesses. And you need only go to the 1milliancups.com forward slash greater SMTX website and click on follow to become part of the community. Uh, and of course, if you need more information, you're welcome to reach out to, um, to me. And let's see if I can advance. All right, are you seeing the next slide? 
Okay. <laughs> this is our program for next month on Tuesday, May 11th. It's hosted by the Buda Area Chamber of Commerce with Hamid Yaz, 10 Overlooked Marketing Secrets. So please do register. Uh, if you can be with us that day on, from 10 to 11, it promises to be an excellent program hosted by this great group of chambers and the Greater San Marcos Partnership again. So um, be sure to be with us next month. Also, for those of you in the region, we have a program that is hosted by a couple of our area school districts that is Senior Hiring Day that is going to be taking place on Thursday, May 13th. It's called CREW and it's from nine to 12 in Buda. So please feel free to reach out if you're an employer who is looking for uh, interns that are uh, graduating seniors that would like to consider hiring them or bringing them on as interns. And that is it for today. If uh, any of you would like to review a recording of this webinar, in about 24 hours, it should be up on YouTube at the Greater San Marcos uh, TX website. So we want to thank you all today. Thank our chambers, thank our hosts, and most of all, thank our sponsors, HEB Plus, Kyle Economic Development, and the Kyle Area Chamber of Commerce for the wonderful program today. And thank you, David, for being with us. It's wonderful to have a a presenter of your caliber with us today to share. Thank you all. Thank you to all of our participants as well. Have a wonderful day. Take care. <laughs>